Thanks for clicking! Canadian fixed mortgage rates have been artificially pushed down by the U.S. election. This is the conclusion to be drawn from a new article circulating around Wall Street, saying that the U.S. Treasury is manipulating markets, or what the report calls stealth quantitative easing. I'm warning you, do not do it! The article, which has gotten a fair amount of attention in the U.S. media, makes the case that because the U.S. Treasury has changed the manner in which it borrows money, this has led to artificially lower interest rates in the United States. So the Fed is trying to tighten financial condition to slow down the economy and inflation to achieve a soft landing, while Treasury has been trying to ease financial conditions by trying to boost the economy. And since, as we've seen time and again, especially late last week and early this week, when Canada's cost of borrowing plummeted on events coming out of the United States, what happens in the U.S. matters much more to Canadian borrowers than a simple rate cut here or there from our own central bank. I'm what counts out here. As such, the paper has important implications for us here north of the border. So what I want to do today is go over the paper circulating around Wall Street, take a look at some implications for us here in Canada, and then discuss what to look for next. As we'll see today, what happens in the United States has a direct impact on us here in Canada, even more so than our own central bank, and with the events unfolding this week, we'll no doubt continue to demonstrate that fact. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into this paper. On to the Treasury manipulation. First off, I just want to get this out of the way from the get-go, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has rejected claims that Treasury has been manipulating markets to lower interest rates. But for our purposes here in Canada, the political intent of the actions taken by Treasury matter less than the mechanics and the effects of those actions, as we're really just trying to uncover the factors which dictate our cost of borrowing. Why? On to the paper. The paper argues that Treasury's decision to rely more on short-term debt, which it calls Activist Treasury Issuance, or ATI, means it is engaging in a form of stealth quantitative easing. And, prior to moving on, we need to very briefly recall three important mechanics to this story. Canada's cost of borrowing, bond prices versus yields, and a quick discussion of quantitative easing. Let me tell you a couple of three things. First, Canada's cost of borrowing, as we've talked about before so many times on this channel, since the United States is seen as the safest borrower in the world, for now, everyone else has to pay a premium when they go to borrow money. So, if the US is going to pay more to borrow money, that means that the Canadian government needs to borrow even more to borrow money, which means that you and I, which are seen as riskier borrowers than the Canadian government when we borrow money, will pay more as well. Second, very briefly, recall that a bond's price and its yield are inverted. So if I have a bond that I bought for $100 that's going to pay $105 at maturity, that bond is yielding 5%. However, if I sell that bond to Governor Macklem for say $103, since the bond price went up, its yield goes down, with that bond now only yielding 1.9%. So if the price of a bond goes up, its yield goes down, and vice versa. And this brings us to the third point, quantitative easing, or QE where the central bank bids up the prices, artificially pays higher prices for longer term bonds, sending down longer term yields. This is exactly what happened during the pandemic as the central bank bought up hundreds of billions of dollars worth of long term bonds here in Canada, trillions of dollars worth of bonds in the United States, pushing down long term interest rates. And very purposely, says the paper, QE leads to lower interest rates in easing of financial conditions. Financial conditions ease and create more economic activity through wealth effects, cheap access to funds, increased investment, and so forth. Further, quantitative easing also helps to increase the money supply as all of that money that was printed up by the central banks and given to the banks to buy those bonds starts floating around in the system. That's all good shit. So, under quantitative easing, the central bank artificially manipulates the bond market, bidding up bond prices to manufactured highs, sending yields and interest rates lower. And the paper in question, the one that's circulating around Wall Street, says that the Treasury Department is capable of doing this as well. And for this, we turn to how the United States borrows money. When the Treasury Department announces that it's going to be borrowing money, it has to announce where it's going to be borrowing money. Is it going to be borrowing in the short term through bills or in the long term through bonds? It did this in late 2023 when it announced it was going to be leaning far more on the short term. 
While Treasury usually borrows about 15 to 20 percent of its money in short-term debt or bills, it announced this time that it was going to be relying much heavier on short-term debt, or about 47 percent of the money being borrowed. Smart. So the Treasury Department announced it was going to be relying much heavier on that short-term debt, not putting as much pressure on the long-term bond market. And by doing this, says the paper in question, the Treasury Department is producing similar effects as that of quantitative easing. Had the Treasury have issued the normal amount of long-term debt, that would have pushed yields higher. As we saw earlier, bond prices and yields are inverted. So, were the U.S. Treasury to issue more long-term bonds that would have put more bonds onto the market, thereby lowering prices, which would have sent yields upwards. So, whereas under quantitative easing, the Federal Reserve removed long-term bonds, and therefore long-term risk, from the market when it bought up those long-term bonds, the Treasury Department is now not even putting that risk into the market, limiting the risk at the source. So, the price of long-term debt is being kept artificially low, much like it was during the period of quantitative easing, and, says the paper, the loosening effects of this stealth QE is also showing up in the money supply. As when banks buy up that U.S. Treasury debt since it's such short term, those banks can use that debt as collateral to issue more debt. As such, according to this paper, Active Treasury Issuance, or ATI, is producing much of the same effects as quantitative easing. And as to why all this matters, the paper estimates that were Active Treasury Issuance to be termed out, meaning repaid by the government and then replaced by long-term debt, that would lead to a short-term 50 basis point increase in the 10-year yield which would settle into a 30 basis point increase in the longer term. Given that, says the paper, a 50 basis point increase in the 10 year yield is equivalent to a 2% increase by the Federal Reserve, that's not insignificant. So if the US Treasury is manipulating debt markets in order to help the Democrats in 2024, sending down the price of long term debt, then if the US is paying less to service its debt, the US is paying less for more debt, then that means Canada and Canadian borrowers are paying less for their debt as well, meaning the U.S. election has artificially pushed down Canadian mortgage rates. Now, obviously this paper is not without its issues. As we've discussed before in the past, there are inherent problems with counterfactuals trying to guesstimate what would have happened as there's an infinite number of intervening variables that could have come into play, butterfly effect, etc. But I think there is some evidence of these mechanics at work in the bond market. In late October of 2023, after the Treasury announced that it would be leaning far more heavier on the short-term bond market, yields on the 10-year Treasury began to fall, 30 basis points within a day of the announcement. And the yield on Canadian five-year bonds dropped as well with mortgage rates following soon thereafter. So if the US Treasury is engaged in some sort of stealth quantitative easing, which this paper argues that it is, then the Treasury's attempt to manipulate the markets is actually helping Canadian borrowers. Now, as mentioned earlier, the political motivation behind any actions taken by Treasury is not really our concern for the purposes of this video, as I'm really just trying to reiterate the point that the media that so many tend to forget that a simple rate decision coming from the Bank of Canada here or there is a relative inconsequence when compared to the actions coming out of the United States. Again, as we saw last week and as we're seeing this week. And on that note, although there has been some pushback to this article, with the New York Times arguing that no, Treasury is not trying to rig the election for the Democrats, even the article in the Times isn't arguing with the conclusions that the Treasury choice of bill issuance can have major macroeconomic effects, but rather just notes that this choice is not being done deliberately to help the Democrats. So even the New York Times, which rejects the notion that the US Treasury is purposefully manipulating markets to sway the election, isn't arguing with the mechanics, isn't arguing with the extent to which these actions taken by the Treasury Department have artificially lowered interest rates, have provided stimulus to the market, a stimulus that has translated into lower borrowing costs for us here in Canada. And I really wanted to bring up the paper making its way around Wall Street, making its way around the Treasury Department, as it points to something that we've discussed so many times on this channel. 
that a simple interest rate decision coming from the Bank of Canada does not have as big of an effect on our own markets as anything coming out of the United States. If Treasury is keeping yields artificially low, providing artificial stimulus, regardless of the motivation, then that does have a big impact on us here in Canada and had absolutely nothing to do with our central bank. As to where fixed mortgage rates are heading, that remains to be seen, but we'll obviously continue to track events coming out of the United States and how that impacts us here in Canada. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.